Right, so locative apps for Wolverhampton Blue Plaques and Welford Road Cemetery. Um, I've been working with, uh, with Nick, who you saw earlier, and a couple of other people here at De Montfort University to produce um, location-based smartphone applications to help people discover um, something of Wolverhampton uh, and Leicester's history through uh, this idea of kind of location. So the opportunity here was, uh, like I said, to tap into the history of a place through very location-specific uh, items. Um, in the case of Wolverhampton, we were looking at the blue plaques. Uh, the blue plaques, as I'm sure you're all aware of, uh, are put up in places of historical significance to commemorate uh, events, people, buildings, uh, corporations in the history of, of that place. Uh, and Wolverhampton, uh, for uh, quite some time, have been very proactive in putting up a wide range of plaques. There are um, some 150, I think, uh, blue plaques in Wolverhampton. Um, and they really wanted a way to kind of showcase this and provide greater accessibility to this. Um, and then cemetery plots, which uh, continues the deathly theme. Uh, the Welford Road Cemetery here in Leicester uh, was the only active cemetery through much of the Victorian age. And so through the people who were interred there, it's possible to discover a uh, rich history of Leicester um, in a way that might capture people's imagination, uh, perhaps for the wrong reasons. But there we are. So there's an opportunity there to try and do something um, that would help tell these stories and present, uh, present images to the public uh, through something that they've already, already got in their pocket, their smartphone. Uh, so we've got these ideas here of exploration, discovery, and education. Uh, through the use of location, we really wanted to be able to allow people to explore and wander Wolverhampton city centre and find information about where they're stood, what's going on here, or explore through the locations in the cemetery and discover the history through kind of where they're where they stood there. So smartphones um, are an ideal candidate for allowing access to this kind of, uh, this kind of information. Um, they're fairly abundant. Lots of people have these devices, uh, which is useful and have them already. Uh, they're powerful and GPS enabled and connected, which means that they are able to deal with the kind of information we want to present. They're able to locate themselves within space um, and they're able to, to get information from the internet. Uh, through GPS or Wi-Fi connections. So really they provide the ideal tool uh, for visitors to a site to be able to, to access information about it. Also they can run apps. Um, and people already know how to use these. Rather than designing a, a new hardware system uh, such as you might get in a, a fixed space uh, installation like a museum, um, people know how to use their smartphones already. Uh, there are uh, idioms set up and, and uh, ways in which they know how to interact with the devices that mean that they are able to easily and quickly access apps. Um, how many people here have a smartphone, iPhone, Android, something like that? Excellent. Point proven, I think. And hopefully, uh, through using those devices day to day, you are able to, to download a new app or use an app in a way that is intuitive to you. And we wanted to build on that and use these common gestures so that people can really access the information easily. So moving on to the, uh, onto the app itself, um, give me a second to get some water. Uh, I'm focusing here on the Blue Plaques uh, app rather than show you two that are fairly similar. So the app itself is split into a number of sections. Uh, first up we have the directory. The directory lists all the items. In the case of Wolverhampton it's all the Blue Plaques, um, all alph alph alphabetized call me up on that. Um, searchable, so it searches through what the plaque is commemorating in the story so people can be stood in front of a plaque and easily find the information for the one they're looking at. Um, and the, the, the plaques themselves are all categorised as well, so you can restrict this to the particular category that you're interested in. For the Welford Road Cemetery app, um, the same is true. Um, some of the, uh, the people who are interred there fall under multiple categories, such as they might have been a famous sports person and have suffered a horrific death. Um, there's an interesting lady in there, Dotty, who uh, skydives and her parachute didn't open. So that's definitely in the uh, interesting deaths category. Uh, so the directory screen here provides really easy access into, uh, into all the information. Um, we also have the, the item details. So tapping any of these entries on here will take you into details of that item. Uh, so in the case here, we've got the Brian Motor, uh, the, sorry, the Britain Motor Company. Uh, you've got a picture of the, the plaque there. 
Some of these plaques have three or four images, some have two. So that image view there, you can just scroll to see the images. You can tap it and the whole screen fills with, uh, with these images. Um, and then we've got information about, uh, about this particular plaque. Um, all these plaques are funded by individual sponsors. So we're listing the name of the sponsor there uh, and then the story that goes with the plaque. Uh, this is all taken from information that the Wolverhampton Civic and Historical Society have already published um, online, but providing it in an interactive, engaging uh, format. Uh, from this view, you can also do a few other things as well. That icon in the top right-hand corner allows you to share this information. Uh, so you can share this out onto Facebook, onto Twitter, um, or you can look at where this plaque is on a map of Wolverhampton. Uh, and you can see the, the right-hand uh, screenshot here uh, shows kind of the share screen where it uses the built-in share functionality within the phone to share the information. Uh, so again, building on something that users will be used to uh, from using their, their phone. Uh, we've also got the, the map. So at the moment, this map is in the mode where it's showing all the plaques that we have the location data for. Uh, each of those pins represents a plaque. You can tap on one and get the little popover that tells you what the plaque is commemorating. Um, and gives you a brief description of the location of it. Uh, Pelham works on Pelham Street in that case. Uh, tapping the little eye then takes you into the detail screen so you can then get into the full details for this particular, particular plaque. Uh, this will also show you your own location on the map. So if you stood in Wolverhampton, you can, you can zoom in and find where you are and easily navigate to individual, individual plaques. Uh, in the case of the, uh, uh, the cemetery application, uh, we've got a, a lot of pins in a very small space, particularly compared to Wolverhampton. Um, and so within that map view, there's a possibility to restrict it to just a category. So you can see all the sports people who are, who are buried there. Um, <coughs> there are, with there being some 150 uh, entries in here, and it's around the same for the cemetery application as well, uh, we wanted to provide a way for people to log those, those items that are particularly relevant or interesting to them. Uh, so with any item, you're able to favourite it and tag it as your favourite dead person or favourite building. Um, and they all then come up in this view here. And again, this is searchable. Um, the way that you can do that is from the detail screen, that little star in the top right-hand corner. Uh, tap that and that is then added to your favourites and easily accessible for evermore uh, within the app. Um, <coughs> we also wanted to be able to include some background information within the app itself. Uh, so the fourth tab there, the Info Ab, uh, tab, gives background information on the plaques, Wolverhampton Civic Society, the app itself, it gives some useful information on how to use the app. And it's also a, a place where we can provide links out to websites for Wolverhampton Civic Society or the Friends of Welford Road Cemetery, um, as well as email links to people involved in the app so we can gather feedback um, or answer any questions that people have. Um, <coughs> And this really, I think, is, is kind of a, a key idea because it's one thing to send an app out there and allow people to be able to get hold of it and download it and use it, but it would be really lovely if we can get some two-way interaction going on with the people who are using this app and find out not just their feedback on the app itself, but be able to answer questions that maybe aren't answered by the app itself. So there's an opportunity there for, uh, for further engagement with the users. Um, <coughs> so this is, this is great. We've got all this information installed in the app and people download it uh, and install it. Um, however, this information can change. New plaques might be put up. Um, the, uh, Chris at the Friends of Welford Road Cemetery is, is constantly building up new stories around people who are interred there and adding these to the database. Uh, so we have uh, a website portal through which uh, Wolverhampton Civic Society or the Friends of Welford Road Cemetery are able to update effectively the contents of the app. Um, so they can log into the website, they can edit any item they want, add items, delete items. Anytime somebody then launches the app, um, it then checks in with the database um, and downloads any updates. So the app always stays current and fresh and gets any new information that's there. Um, particularly in the case of, uh, for example, the images in the Blue Plaques app, a lot of those images were, were cropped from what was on the web um, with, with retina displays and high density displays on mobile phones. It would be nice to provide uh, higher detail images. And so as those get collected and taken, they can be added to the app and will replace the ones that are there uh, at the moment. So this system has been uh, developed so that we can duplicate it. We can reproduce this for different purposes. Uh, the website itself uh, is very much geared towards this. Um, 
when the, the website is, uh, is created or put in place for a new use, uh, then there's a, a fairly straightforward kind of configuration document that you just put your details into and it all powers off that. Uh, so we're able to reuse the website again and again. Uh, the app itself takes a little more work to reconfigure uh, for a new project, but the idea behind this is that we can repurpose this for more location-based projects and present new information uh, to people. Uh, so hopefully this provides a tool that we can use in a range of, a range of situations for a range of different people. Um, just want to say uh, thanks to the people who are involved. Uh, the people from DMU there, uh, Z is actually Stella, who's administered the next door. Um, Ismail is actually called Effie. And he was involved, particularly in entering all the data for all these, uh, for all these plaques and all these uh, people who are buried. Uh, and then Nick and Doug Haw uh, Cawthorn here at DMU. Uh, Paul and Claire Dark at Wolverhampton Civic Society have been instrumental in, uh, in getting all this together. Uh, and then Chris Powers from the Friends of Welford Road Cemetery. Uh, and thank you to all you for, for listening. I hope you're interested in some of what uh, I've talked about. If you want to ask any questions, please do later. Grab me or Nick in the break. The, our email addresses are there. And I understand that these slides are going to go up online for you to access as well. I won't need any further warnings you've got, I don't think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.